Hello, John from Peter Tyson, and today we're going to do my personal picks of some of the standout stand mount speakers under a thousand pound, ranging from a couple of hundred pounds as I film this right up to nine hundred and ninety nine pounds. I will leave all of the products listed in the video below in the description so you can click the link and visit the Peter Tyson website to see current prices and availability. These are my picks. What would yours be? Leave them in the comments. Let's just uh, crack on. For this test, I've used the Arcam Radia A15 amplifier with the ST5 streamer. If you want to see a full video on that, I will leave a link in the description. All the speakers were positioned in the same place in the same room. And then just for fun afterwards, I did move them around to play with the sound and the tuning with the room and the rear wall. So I had both frames of reference. So first up, the ELAC Debut B5.2, catchy name. ELAC is a German company founded in 1926, originally called Electroacoustic, and their initial focus was on sonar technology. In 1948 they released their first turntable, and in 1984 they started designing loudspeakers. The Debut B5.2 is a two-way front-ported bass reflex speaker. With newly designed custom drivers, you've got a one-inch cloth dome tweeter with a wide dispersion waveguide and a 5.25-inch woven aramid fibre woofer for greater stiffness. They've got pretty good construction considering their price point and the front port means that they're not too fussy being placed close to the rear wall. Now these things are cheap. Uh, as I'm filming this in December 23, they're only a couple of hundred quid at Peter Tyson and they sound good. Not just good for the money or good for the size, they genuinely sound really good. So if you're on a tight budget and you want genuinely decent sound, the ELAC Debut 5.2 will do you proud. Next up is the KEF Q350. KEF is a British brand established in Maidstone, Kent in 1961. They focus on new materials and driver technologies. In particular, they are very proud of their UniQ driver that features in most of their speakers, right from the low end range in the Q series to the very, very top end of their flagship Blade speakers. So the fact that you get a UniQ driver for this sort of price is quite impressive. It's a two-way rear-ported bass reflex speaker with the tweeter mounted in the middle of the aforementioned UniQ 6.5 inch driver. Kef claimed that the driver array like this gives a much wider dispersion and a much wider, more forgiving sweet spot when you sat listening to your music. Of all the speakers on test here, the finish is my least favourite, although the Walnut does look the most premium. Both the styling and the sound are quite unique on the KEF Q350s. They are very detailed and they do have that lovely wide dispersion so they're not too fussy on the sweet spot. Bass is quite tight and controlled and there's lots and lots of details. The bass is not particularly deep, in fact it's the least depth that you're going to get from any of these speakers on test, but it does over exaggerate in the upper bass register to try and compensate. Personally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of the UniQ sound. I know a lot of people are, so if you are auditioning these types of speakers, these are definitely worth a listen because a lot of people swear by them and KEF have a really strong following. It's all subjective at the end of the day and the best way to do it is to listen for yourself. Next up is the Dali Oberon 3. Dali being a Danish brand established in 1983. They focus on faithful sound reproduction and realism. The Oberon 3 is a two-way rear-ported bass reflex speaker with a one-inch ultra-lightweight soft dome tweeter and their distinctive seven-inch wood fibre mid bass woofer. It's quite a large woofer for the size of speaker and it's the largest on test today. 
In terms of build quality, they're not the most sturdy and solid here, but there's certainly nothing to complain about. And I personally quite like the styling and the burgundy tinge to that distinctive driver. The Darleys were probably the easiest to tune in relation to how far away from the wall they are. Darley recommend between five and 50 centimeters, depending on how much base reinforcement you want. That obviously is gonna change depending on your room and your taste, but they tended to be the most sensitive on how close or far away from the wall they're placed. Thanks to the larger driver, they've probably got the deepest bass extension, particularly in this room of all the speakers I've tested today. Of all the speakers here, these are probably one of the easiest to listen to, regardless of source or type of music, they just deal with it, but spend the time to get them set up properly and they'll reward you with some excellent easygoing sound. Next up, the Bowers & Wilkins 607 S3, new for 2023, the latest version. Bowers & Wilkins originating from a radio and electronics shop opened in West Sussex just after World War II by John Bowers and Roy Wilkins. In 1966, a small production line was built in the backyard and B&W Loudspeakers Limited was born. The 607 is the smallest and least costly of the entire B&W range, as I film this in December 2023. It's another two-way rear ported base reflex design with a one inch decoupled double dome titanium tweeter and a five inch continuum mid base driver. It's the same technology found in much, much higher in the Bowers and Wilkins range. There's not that many speaker manufacturers that can match Bowers and Wilkins consistency right through from the very bottom to the very top of the range, not just in terms of sound quality, but build quality and finishes too. They are the smallest speakers that I'm testing today, and they are also the most lively. They certainly inject a bit of fun into your music. They're nice and bright and energetic and lively, and don't let the small size fool you. They certainly do not underachieve when it comes to bass performance. The levels of control and detail that these can reproduce at this size and price level is actually quite staggering. Definitely, definitely worth a listen if you're auditioning small speakers. Next up, the Monitor Audio Silver 50, seventh generation, probably the most established and most evolved loudspeaker we've tested today. Another British audio brand formed in Cambridge in 1972, and they want to make audio more human. They're not a snobby or a stuffy kind of company, and they tend to go their own way, and they favor metal drive units over paper or wood pulp. Another two-way rear-ported bass reflex speaker design. Monitor Audio say that they are designed for smaller spaces. They're not fussy about being placed hard against walls and can even be wall mounted with the Monitor Audio official wall brackets. Housing a one inch Seacam gold dome tweeter with a uniform dispersion waveguide for a more lifelike sound and a 5.25 inch Seacam mid bass driver with a rigid surface technology for extra clarity, apparently. They're quite soft and warm sounding, very, very forward mid range, makes them quite suitable for vocal music and they're particularly good for TV and movie watching. Some may find them a bit soft sounding and not particularly exciting, but I find them quite enjoyable. And of all the speakers we've tested here today, I've got to say these are probably the nicest build quality. They're just dense, heavy little blocks of wood, and that shows in the sound as well. Despite their teeny size, again, just like the Bowers and Wilkins, they're a little too small for these stands, they're certainly not shy when it comes to bass performance. If anything, a little bit too boosted for my taste, but again, worth a listen if you enjoy that type of sound. Next up, the Focal Vestia number one, and the largest speaker of all the ones tested today. Focal being a French brand established in 1979. It's the preferred speaker manufacturer of Name Audio, so you're in good company. Focal focus on the sensation and emotion of music, and they think that every time you sit and listen to your favorite music, it should be an occasion and a privilege. Isn't that lovely? 
And this does show with a two-way front-ported bass reflex speaker. With a one inch aluminium magnesium inverted dome TAM tweeter and a six and a half inch slate fiber mid bass. In terms of styling, they're not my personal favorite, but the leather look material on the front and top does add a little bit of class and make them a little more premium. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder after all. More importantly, in terms of sound, they're probably the most refined and smooth. Nothing's exaggerated or left out, and they're not too fussy about what you play on them or with positioning. They have probably the cleanest bass of all the speakers I've tested and the most effortless, if not the most exciting. All in all, I find the Focals to be an absolute pleasure to listen to. I could quite happily kill a few hours listening to some of my favorite tunes. Last and certainly not least, the Sonus Faber Luminar 2s. Sonus Faber are Italian designers of luxury handmade audio and loudspeakers since 1983. Sonus Faber is Latin for artisan of sound, which is a perfect description for their handmade beautiful loudspeakers. They are now owned by the Macintosh Group, who happen to make the coolest amplifiers on the planet in my humble opinion, of course. The Lumina 2 is a two-way front-ported bass reflex design with a one-inch damped Amex dome tweeter and a six-inch pulped paper mid-bass driver. Nothing fancy on paper, just simple, honest materials. Their focus is on natural sound, honest, natural materials and handcrafted design. And this shows in the cabinet with the real multi-layered wood finish and the leather panels on the top and sides. This also translates into the sound. The fact that you can get a Sonos Faber for a thousand pounds is quite astonishing and nothing has been spared. They do sound very natural, they're warm and open, the stereo image is beautiful and these are the type of speaker where I will just sit and listen to my music rather than listening to the speakers and picking fault. They're that one more track kind of speaker. They're so enjoyable. Regardless of electronics or placement, they seem to just turn electricity into enjoyment. I thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon with the Lumina 2s. For detail, speed and accuracy, I'd probably lean towards the Bowers and Wilkins or the Focal. For dance music or home cinema TV watching, I'd lean towards the Monitor Audio or even perhaps the Kef. Great all-rounder and easiest to listen to was probably the Dali. If you need good sound on a serious budget, then don't look any further than the ELAC. For pure and simple musical enjoyment, or even if you just want the best looking one and the best finished, I'd be taking home the Sonus Faber. These are of course all my personal opinions. I can only help guide you. These are the stand mount speakers that I would pick for a short list for under a thousand pounds for all the different budgets. I highly encourage you to call into either Carlisle or Newcastle on one of these numbers if you want to arrange a demonstration and try some speakers for yourself. Is there a speaker that you love that I've missed from the list? Leave it in the comments below. Until then, you'll see me in the next video. Take care.